I have had the good fortune of advising the Chinese. And between 2003 and six, the Chinese hired me. But here I'm sitting with some of the senior economists in China. Works getting to Hu Jintao, the president of the time. And I uh, get to hang out in the Forbidden City. Yeah. We're working on what's called Shao Kang. Shao Kang is a Confucian word, means well being. Shao Kang society has been the national economic agenda for China since 1991. The West doesn't know about it. It was defined in terms of a certain GDP per capita for China, originally set at $3,500. Now China's GDP is over $7,500. But what we were actually working on was societal well-being indicators for all of the municipal governments across China. So every mayor would be rewarded based on these suite of indicators, way beyond what anyone was doing in Canada. Again, politically challenging, because some cities have more pollution than others. So you know, you get some bickering within the Communist Party. But boy, can you do stuff if you have a you know, a homogeneous culture. And, and the Toronto, uh, the national newspaper was Fat Cat Albertans Struggle with Happiness. That was a headline on the front page. And we just, something, something was shifting. And that led to a conversation that took 10 years to develop the Canadian Index of Well-Being. But guess what? The media, nobody paid attention when we released it last year. The Prime Minister Harper doesn't pay attention. Premiers aren't paying attention. So, wow, is that, that's pretty depressing. 10 years of solid academic work, best scientists on this stuff, and we didn't get the soundbite. So we gotta, we got to use the language, um, the language of a prime minister who's an economist. So we can measure, we've talked about this already, uh, there are different ways of measuring well-being, objectively and subjectively. And I think we need the balance. If we have a crime rate, we need to ask people how, how do they feel walking at, at night. We need to continually balance the objective and subjective. The lived experience and the so-called objective proxy. I have this belief that capitalism hasn't been fully discovered. And who defined the word capitalism? Marx. Anyway, Marx. What? The father of communism? So wait a minute. I don't think capitalism fully been discovered yet. What if capitalism was, was in the context of well-being? I think that would be an exciting future. And I think we can help tell that new story. This is a secret spice of GDP, how it's measured. But this is the father, the architect of you know, gross national product in the United States. The welfare of a nation can scarcely be inferred by a measurement of national income. Goals for more growth should specify of what and for what. I have the Kool-Aid jug there because we all drink the GDP Kool-Aid. <laughs> Here's a GDP in the United States, stock market. Here's 9-11. Yeah, GDP and has to go up always. Here are all the things that we already heard about. I like this cartoon. Here's in a simple picture, here's our GDP hero and the villain, right? The dad that stays at home, makes sandwiches for his kids. This is the U.S. Gender Progress Indicator. But politicians don't like downward sloping, sloping curves. This is environmental depreciation in the United States. So when we do this GPI work, we start with personal spending, which is 50, about 55% of the U.S. GDP, and we make an adjustment for in income inequality because as a called the Gini coefficient. We say if, as that has increased, guess, guess when it was the lowest? Can you guess? 1968, when Bobby Kennedy was alive. It was the lowest in the United States ever, and it's been going up ever since. We want to, we add things like the value of unpaid work. This is, this is G, GPI for Alberta. So unpaid work is about 35% of, by value of Alberta's GDP. Then we do additional uh, additions of value of volunteer work, the value of things like streets of public infrastructure that deliver value. And we do a bunch of deductions, uh, depletion of non-renewable -re resources, uh, environmental uh, pollution, the cost of commuting, the loss of wetlands, uh, the cost of underemployment and unemployment, the cost of auto crashes. You can see that each one of these line items is worth a PhD. There's a lot of research that has to be done, and nobody's doing it. The economic schools, they're so busy playing with their mathematical models. So this takes a lot of work. 
Uh, but behind every one of these monetized numbers has to be a physical number. There's a physical inventory behind each one of these. And one of the challenges is even if you come up with as a just a G, GPI here, uh, who's paying attention? Who's going to pay attention? At least we can do these on a policy by policy basis. These other indicators are societal well-being indicators, uh, including the Index for Social Health by uh, Mark Maryhoff in at to Fordham years ago. So, but what's interesting is the tipping point is 1973 on OPEC. Um, of course, Nixon takes the dollar off the gold standard, 1971. But it seems to be 73 is that sort of bifurcation point and well be. So these are things that I've identified as what's gotten better, what's gotten worse. We're living longer. Uh, stock market, of course, we, we, we're spending more money on material things. We actually have less air pollution, thanks to the US EPA founding in the 70s. But we got a whole bunch of other uh, risks to well-being. What I did in Alberta, as I said, given what I've just told you about my idea of an accounting system, said the GPI, the original GPI is just the income statement adjustment. But what I'm really interested in is the longitudinal trends in the indicators that are a meaningful to Albertans. And are, some of these are connected to the original GPI line items, but some of them, like ecological footprint, is not. So what we did is tracked uh, trends from 1960 to 2001. And this is my first attempt to present data, a portrait of Alberta in 1999. There are, there are 40 of these. And to, to, in order to understand this, the scale goes from 0 to 100. 100 means it's the best condition it's been in 40 years. So if it's, we've got life expectancy highest it's ever been, GDP is highest ever been, but we've got underemployment problems, we've got obesity and suicide problems. So it, in a way, it's a simple image to say if, if the flower was perfect, everything would be right, perfect, but it's not. And it looks like this. It goes, you know, it grew up. It changes. 1961, year up, I was one year old, was the best year. And then it kind of went, got worse. Well, 1998 was the worst year. And this is the overall trend. So this is the index. Each one of these reduced to one single average, showing that, again, a downward trend and leveling off in the 90s, even as Alberta's GDP grew. And then different indices for. Then I got really edgy. I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing some cool correlation analysis. What's actually correlated to GEP? And this is one of the highest correlates, the incidence of cancer. This is R squared of 0.892. Everyone's statistician go. So visually, you can see it. But statistic, now I'm not saying there's, there's no attribution here, but it's just visually interesting. And I get grief from Alberta Health, because like, you can't show that graph. I was like, yes, we can. It's in the public record. Did you try other uh, measurements? Uh-huh. This one was like... Like uh, price of oil and, and uh, STDs and Fort McMurray or, you know. <laughs> do any of these things connect, you know? What's driving GDP? How about domestic violence in Edmonton, right? How about car crashes? How does it, right? So yeah, this is, this is where I get really have a lot of fun. So number one, uh, what is the highest correlate to Alberta's GDP? Uh, personal spending, naturally, because it's most makes up GDP. Educational attainment, we're getting smarter. Number three is cancer. Number four, life expectancy. Number five, uh, CO2 emissions. But again, we can then start using this to actually forecast. You want to forecast GDP, the economy? Or you want to grow the economy, get more cancer? You know? <laughs>